Our next inductee, uh, there's really no other way to put it, is um, he's a cultural icon in the country I come from, Canada. Uh, everybody knows him. Any Canadian, any Canadian who's my age remembers exactly where they were on September 28, 1972. They were in school. They were my age. There was no teaching going on. We were all sitting in classrooms. They wheeled in these great big black and white TVs, and we all watched, and we all waited, and we all held our breath as Canada played the final game of the 1972 Summit Series against the Soviet Union. From Kincardine, Ontario, Paul Henderson. Paul Henderson played a starring role in one of the greatest dramatic presentations in hockey history, the 1972 Summit Series between Canada and the Soviet Union. Henderson played on a line with Bobby Clark and Ron Ellis, and the three complemented one another beautifully right from the start. But it was in Moscow where Henderson played the greatest three games of his life. With the team on the ropes and facing defeat, Henderson's Herculean efforts, scoring the winning goal in each of the last three games of the series, are still talked about. Particularly the winner in Game 7. Look at that. Surrounded by four players, somehow he solves the puzzle and scores the winner. Henderson also played in the second Canada-Soviet series in 1974, which the Soviets won. But Henderson is best known for a moment no Canadian my age will ever forget. Game eight, dying seconds. Henderson made a wild stab at it and fell. Comes out in front again. Henderson scores for Canada with 34 seconds remaining. The hero of the most significant international hockey series ever played, Paul Henderson. Now this, uh, Simon told you at the start, my colleague Simon, what a special day this was going to be, and this is really, really special. The man who's coming up to honor Mr. Henderson is, I can say indeed, a man of honor. He was the goalie on whom Henderson scored the goal. Can you imagine that? He's coming up to pay homage to the man, and they were in this great athletic competition. He is also, without question, the most decorated player in international hockey history. Listen to this, three Olympic gold medals an Olympic silver medal, and 10, 10 world championships. He played in his first world championship when he was an 18-year-old boy in the Hobart Arena, which is just a short distance from here. I'm not sure exactly of my Swedish geography, but it's that little building just outside the globe. And he won gold. It's my privilege to introduce Mr. Vladislav Trechak. Thank you very much. First of all, I would like uh, congratulation for his induction today. I watch video now, but bad goalie, yeah? too much goal for me. <laughs> <laughs> Dear friends, uh, it's a special day for me today because I'm, I'm going to introduce 100% professional player. And what is most important for me, my friend, a very good person. I was playing against Paul Henderson in 1972, where USSR met with the best Canadian team. Then, in 1974, for second series, I also remember him when playing some other mutual international games. Four years ago, the Soviet team was playing against the best hockey players of Canada. For me, they were the most exciting games. Uh, I, I was played totally eight games, four games in Canada, four games in Soviet Union. I remember all games, first game, last game. I remember games number six, number seven. You score a winning goal. I never forget you score for me and the amazing goal in the game number eight. I think God gave him these chances for his talent and hard work. So, now I have the pleasure to say that Paul Henderson, please come and, come and, and join me in stage to accept your induction to the IHF Hall of Fame. Please.
Well, Mr. Trechek, uh, thank you very, very much. And most importantly, thank you for letting me score that last goal. <laughs> I've been riding that one goal for 40 years, ladies and gentlemen, and it's been a nice ride. I'd also like to say to Boris also, thank goodness that you had a great line of Karlamov, yourself, and Petrov, because our line was basically sent out there to try to slow you guys down a little bit. And so we got to play all eight games. And so, you know, it's, a, it's ironic as you look back over your life. In, uh, in 1972, we just thought it was going to be a wonderful time. Uh, we were going to win all eight games and uh, send the Russians back, and they would never, ever want to play as a game. <laughs> and then things turned badly for us in that first game, and we found, it out, we found out they were just so gifted and talented. And then it almost became war. And in the end, it was war, basically, because we felt it was our way of life against their way of life. And to be quite frankly, uh, we didn't like them very much. And I can remember Phil Esposito saying to this man right down here, I didn't like you very much. And Boris said, I didn't like you very much either. <laughs> But the, the good news is, is over the years, we've gotten to know each other. And uh, Vladi and I do a, a, a card show in, uh, in Toronto usually every year. And, uh, and you know, we found out we should have hated their system and not them because they're just great guys trying to keep a wife happy, raise kids, and a lot of us now have grandchildren. And uh, uh, boy, is it ever great to be a, a grandfather? You know, I, I love what Tony Campola said about uh, grandchildren. He said, grandchildren are the reward for not killing your own kids. And I've got seven grandchildren today. And so I, I, am, uh, well, thank I am so honored to be here today and be inducted in this prestigious uh, hall. It's just absolutely, it couldn't have worked out better for me. And obviously, uh, to be inducted with my colleagues down here, uh, what a great day it is for me and for my wife. Uh, there's a lot of people that you need to thank. And uh, time doesn't come at all. but. Uh, uh, I also have a wife of 50 years. I've been married, and my wife, Eleanor, I would give her more credit than anyone else in the world for helping me become the person that I am today. Uh, this woman uh, uh, made our home an oasis uh, for myself and my family uh, away from hockey, and uh, she has just been the, the love of my life. Uh, we met when we were 15 and 16, and the fourth time I took her out, I told her I was going to marry her, and she said, you are the most arrogant person I've ever met in my life. <laughs> and so for the next four years, I never proposed. I just said, I'm going to marry you. I'm going to marry you. And so finally, she married me. And uh, I married so far over my head, it's a joke. It really is. And so, Eleanor, I love you so much. And I just thank you for our wonderful 54 years uh, together. But I can also tell you also, uh, I was diagnosed with lymphocytic lymphoma chronic leukemia in November of 2009. And when you get cancer, you want to mate beside, your, uh, beside yourself. And boy, she has uh, uh, been above and beyond incredible. In fact, she was the one that was really instrumental in getting me into a clinical uh, trial back in uh, September of last year. Uh, I was down 20 pounds. I had a growth in my stomach the size of a, grape, a grapefruit. And she got me into a clinical, trouble, uh, clial, a clinic, clinical trial in Bethesda, Maryland. And seven months later, I have put on 20 pounds. The tumor is now the size of the end of my finger. And once again, it was Eleanor that really got that through. And so thank you, thank you very much, my sweetheart. <laughs> you know, I, I, I've been so fortunate over the years. Uh, I have always played with better people than I was on the line. My center iceman, Norm Ullman, was my center iceman for eight straight years. The last three years that I was in Detroit, Normie and I were played uh, uh, were traded to Toronto Maple Leafs, and then I was five years, he was my center iceman in Toronto, and then Ronnie Ellis joined us, and what a treat it is to be able to play with uh, a couple of your great buddies and play with just great hockey players. And then 72 came along, and they put Bobby Clark uh, in between Ronnie Ellis and I, and uh, we were really fortunate. We were the only line that played all eight games, and, uh, and uh, without those two, I would never be standing here today, and so I am so thankful uh, for them. But you know, as you get a little older in life, it's, uh, you recognize that it's so great to have great friends. And I am so thankful for two of my best buddies in the world that have come over here and spent a week with me. And uh, Les and Lynette McFarland, uh, great, great friends. And Steve and uh, Cheryl and Katie Holmes are here spending this time with us. And I thank you so much for coming over and being such inspirational people in my life. And I've got my grandson. Uh, 23-year-old grandson with me, uh, Brandon. 
Uh, and uh, what a treat it is to have you uh, here and be acknowledged and on this. But you know, uh, Matt, I, I always wondered why you wore number 19, uh, 13, and I just saw that it's your birthday. It's the 13th. Yeah, and so, yeah, so I figured that was it, but I'll tell you what. I, I always wore 19, but I, I'm seriously thinking of changing to 13. <laughs> 2013, you know, Team Canada, we were inducted in the Walk of Fame in Toronto. I got the Order of Canada here just a little while ago. I, I was put in the, I, I received the Order of Hockey in Canada, and now this. 13 is a great number, big boy. I'm going to take it off from here. Thank you. Oh, man. As an aside, it's it's one of those moments you just have to you have to shake your head if uh, if if I may indulge you. But uh, my two boyhood her heroes as a kid were Trechak, who was my favorite goalie, and Henderson, who was my favorite player. I was ten years old, and to be here when they're both on the stage, uh, it's something I can't believe.